for the first time in my life, I was like, oh shit, you know, I could die. I was like, this could be something that could potentially end my life. Yo, what's going on guys? Deeks here with another video. And today, dude, I'm going to be going over everything that kind of happened over the past week or so as to why I was in the hospital, what exactly happened, what's going on, and what does the future look like? So let's get right into it. Hit it from the back end. Draw me wild. All right, well, just to start it off, you know, about a week ago on Saturday night or Sunday morning, it was 12 a.m., so, you know, either one works. I was admitted to the hospital. Long story short, I was having a very bad exasperation just from my asthma. It was just, it was so bad to a point where I just, I honestly just couldn't breathe. And just for reference, I did kind of keep everybody updated on Twitter, so if you don't follow me on Twitter, go over there and, uh, you know, drop me a follow. But that's where I'm going to be kind of reading these uh, updates from, but also I'll be giving a little bit more than that just because I was there. Just to start it off the first tweet that I originally posted was that I wanted to originally spend the day making content and grinding out some videos but instead I was being taken to the ER a little bit later I said that you know if I get admitted to the ER into the hospital from the ER into the hospital I was like somebody better be bringing me my PlayStation because dude I can't I can't be off a of call of duty for that long and I'm sure I'm sure to some people it didn't seem like too serious of a situation something that should have been taken seriously I just wasn't gonna sit there and dwell on it I wasn't gonna be upset about it you know whatever happens happens and that's kind of my philosophy man so I get to the ER and they clearly can tell that I'm having trouble breathing um, which, you know, I did not know this until recently, but I wasn't even like wheezing and they said the worst part about it is the fact that I wasn't wheezing because it wasn't showing that I had airflow. They got me to the ER pretty soon after uh, me going there and me showing up. And the first thing they did was they gave me an hour long treatment of a breathing treatment just to see if it would make it better. Unfortunately, after an hour long breathing treatment, I was exactly the same and still could not breathe. So after the first hour long treatment, they gave me another hour long treatment. So I'm two hours in at this point and two hour long treatments and still haven't changed. Nothing has changed. You know, I'm still in the same spot as when I came into there. So at this point, they're trying to give me steroids. They're trying to give me, you know, something to help me open up my lungs. So after giving me something to like open up my lungs a little bit, you know, it worked a little bit. I was to a point where they could be like, okay, well we got something that's, you know, slightly working at this point. And at this point, I'm about four breathing treatments in. They're not hour longs. I think the first two were hour long and then the next two were about 10, 15 minutes long. But even then, I just, I still wasn't able to breathe. So then at this point, they're like, okay, well, you know, your, your lungs have opened up a little bit, but we're going to keep you in observation and uh, we're going to go ahead and admit you to the hospital. So at this point, I'm admitted to the hospital trying to figure out what's going on, how I'm going to end up breathing, if I'm ever going to breathe again. So then they have me on uh, breathing treatments for every two hours. Every two hours, I'm going, getting a breathing treatment. After about four or five breathing treatments, I was like, yo, this, this isn't working because originally they were supposed to switch me from two hours to four hours to kind of space it out and everything. And give it more of a opportunity to be like oh you don't you don't need this at this point you just need to get the get get from being as exasperated ex burn but i'm like yeah no no this isn't working um i'm like i've tried my albuterol inhaler i've tried my nebulizer i've tried to breathe you know at home doing this exact thing and so what you're doing right now i was like it isn't helping i was like that's the whole point of why i came in so then you know i had probably three different doctors come in tell me that they wanted me to specifically see the uh, pulmonologist, somebody that kind of, somebody that kind of takes a look at lungs, you know, specifically to see kind of what's happening. And they said it, it would be negligent, negligent. And this is a funny part. It would be negligent to send me home without sending, seeing a pulmonologist before I left the hospital because I would end up right back there. So then they said they were going to try to space out the treatments from two hours to four hours. Um, and then, you know, I'm there the whole night anyways. So what had happened was they, they did not space them out. Like... I mean, I technically, I guess they did space them out, but I had received one and they said, yeah, we're going to switch this from every, every two hours to every four hours and uh, we'll see how you do. And so then after that, I didn't get a treatment for like another eight hours. It was, it was really quite frustrating. I'm not even going to lie. So like, like I said, you know, in my tweet here, I was like, I'm being admitted to the hospital due to asthma's compliment. <clears throat> Due to asthma complications, doctors are concerned that I'm still wheezing slash can't breathe af even after multiple breathing treatments. So then after that, when they couldn't figure out why my lungs, you know, wouldn't stop being inflamed or it wouldn't calm down, why my, my lungs wouldn't open up for me to breathe. My This entire time, my heart rate was staying anywhere from around like 110 to 150 just resting just laying there which 100 percent is not normal at least it's not normal for me usually my resting heart rate is around a nice like 
60 to 80 somewhere in between there so then i got this message where the doctor said that my heart is inflamed and i have an abnormalities on my lungs getting more blood tests and ultrasound and they said that they want to dive deep into it so at this point you know at this point in the night i'm just kind of sitting there waiting for them what to say but it's kind of so late at night that they're not really going to do anything else like that night because you know i'm not like not gonna die i mean at that point i wasn't gonna die you know i wasn't gonna die right then and there so they were just continuing to give me breathing treatments they were continuing to help me with whatever they could had people checking on me etc i had somebody sitting with me at all points of time so i think my final update for that day was they moved me into my final room for the night they moved my breathing treatments to space them out because they're not really helping tomorrow hopefully we'll get be getting an ultrasound on my heart hopefully have someone bring in my console so i can play some mw3 tonight you know so at this point i'm still you know breathing kind of terribly cannot breathe whatsoever and you know I'm, I'm just like okay well you know breathing treatments aren't working i'm going to sleep you know it's the end of the night whatever let's see what happens so that next morning when they woke me up for my breathing treatment i posted this a little bit after that but i said i woke up around 2 a.m breathing worse than i was before slowly improved but still having a bit of trouble breathing they did an ultrasound of my heart and looked at the pictures this morning our doctor has a meeting and said he would let us know what the next steps are after and, and I do want to say that I did put in there that I appreciate everybody for the support. I appreciate everybody that, you know, put so much support into me throughout this entire week. It has been so, it has been so honestly mind blowing and mind boggling the amount of support that I had on Twitter, in the community, just in general. And I, I just can't appreciate that enough. But at that point, I had woke up feeling terrible. I could not breathe. I didn't know what to do. And, you know, there was nothing that was going to change from what they were telling me or what I, what they were doing. And I don't ever actually think I said this in my update, but they went from thinking it was my heart and went changed it and then thought it was my lungs again. Because when they did the ultrasound of my heart and took a look at my heart, they said the only thing wrong with my heart was that it was working too well. So after that meeting that they had, the doctors had a meeting, had to discuss some things, etc., etc., Dude, I swear I was the most mad I had ever been because I had eight doctors walk into my room and man, like this was the update for that day. Like I had eight doctors walk into my room and this is what they said. The doctors came in and basically said they don't know what's causing it and we're going to observe me and then release me with a referral to the pulmonologist after being discharged, which can take months to be scheduled according to the pulmonologist because we had called. We had called been like, hey, you know, if we were discharged from the hospital with a referral, how long would it take to get a an appointment and they said months and I, I couldn't wait months like there was no point they, I would have ended up right back in the hospital um, instead of having the pulmonologist at the hospital take a look at me and check in with me after my first three doctors told me it would be negligent to discharge me without seeing a pulmonologist because I would end up right back in the hospital my mom was sitting with me my mom told them very politely that she was going to call patient advocate which is basically like uh you know they're not getting the the help he's needed he's not getting the help is needed you're just gonna send him on his way he's gonna end right back up here in the hospital because the doctors just weren't taking me serious and i'm talking seriously man within 10 minutes 10 minutes of her saying that to the nurse she didn't say this to a doctor she said this to a nurse she asked the nurse for the number she already had the number she wanted to give him a chance to make it right dude within 10 minutes of her saying that a pulmonologist came in to check on and when that pulmonologist dude when he came in he was giving me the most support he was actually cared about what he was talking about like he genuinely seemed interested and wanted to figure out what was going on so he could fix it so at that point you know i was getting more blood work done uh steroid flonase and i was finally going to be able to follow up with a pulmonologist afterwards as well but dude it was the first time i in like since I had been in the hospital that I felt like somebody actually wanted to figure out you know what's going on and actually cared about me being there but like dude these doctors this doctor I complained about her too I talked to a bunch of other doctors about her and, and everything basically the way this doctor came in when the eight doctors came in they had the head doctor you know the whoever was leading it she came in and the way she talked to me was basically well you know what you vape and you smoke so if you stop vaping and you stop smoking those are your your only issues you'll never have breathing issues again you just got to stop doing that and i'm like what like i understand that you know vaping vaping and smoking are definitely an issue i was like but it was definitely not the underlying issue it was not the main cause it wasn't what was causing me not being able to breathe and i found out a little bit later probably about a day later uh from another doctor that the type of type of doctor she is is a uh, do doctor so she she believes in lifestyle change first and then if that doesn't work then she believes in medicine which by the way just so y'all know i did i am stopping smoke i'm stopped smoking okay 
Like that was a big issue and I, I'd rather want to be able to breathe and live, you know, a decent amount of time. So then the next tweet I posted was another, it was kind of late at night. They weren't going to do much. They were just kind of giving me breathing treatments, my medicine, etc., etc. And uh, so I finally had gotten my, you know, PS5. I finally got my console. Dude, we were gaming. I was playing some games with the boys, keeping my spirits up. Like at this point, I still wasn't able to breathe or anything, but... At least I was able to, you know, put a smile on my face, keep my spirits up, and have fun. And, like, so then I wake up that next morning. I feel a little bit better. You know, I'm, I'm able to breathe a little bit after all these, after the steroids, the Flonase, the allergy medicine. Um, you know, all of this stuff that they're, they're finally giving me to treat. And I said, I'm waiting on doctors to talk to me, although it doesn't seem like I'll be leaving today, unfortunately. I'll keep, uh, I'll... I'll continue to keep everybody updated. Thank you all so much for the consistent support. It means so much, means the world to me, which it did. It, it still does. I mean, it means the absolute world to me how much, how many people supported. So at this point, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like I'm not going home today. I'm like, they're still wanna, they wanna observe me and, and they wanna just kind of keep me here to see what's going on because I still wasn't able to breathe and everything. I still wasn't able to breathe. I was still wheezing a bit and you know, that, that's, that's the last thing they had told me. They said, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna let you go home yet because of the fact that you are still breathing the way you are and it doesn't seem right to just send you home. And I was like, okay, well, that means I got to stay another day in the hospital. It, it wasn't like I didn't want to be there. It's just I would rather, like, I wanted to know what was wrong. I wanted to get everything fixed. And I know that takes time, and it's just I, patience is hard for me, man. But shortly after they said that I might not, this was in, like, the morning. It was probably about 6 to 8 a.m., somewhere in that time frame where they told me I might not. It, it wasn't likely I was going home. So then, you know, probably around 2 p.m.-ish, give or take, I actually started feeling better, and... For the first time, I was I was able to breathe without without like an insane amount of struggle. And like this was like this has been going on for right around like six years, man. So then as they came in to do like a nice little checkup of me around like two to four p.m. somewhere in that time frame, they were telling me that I sounded really good for right then and that like right like right then they they were telling me I sounded really good. I wasn't wheezing like pretty much at all. It was like incredible incredible improvement and, and i was honestly relieved so then they had the uh the pulmonologist come in he was talking to me he basically said that if i did go home i would just have to be diligent about what i was doing there and do it at home as well and just kind of keep up my treatments keep up everything and um stay on top of everything too stay away from triggers and everything dude it doesn't matter when i'm doing it dude I, it doesn't matter what kind of video i make every time every time dude every freaking time but the final update was we are home. The doctors talked to me and let me know that my condition was severe to life threatening. With all that's been done, I will be on medication for the next two weeks as well as uh, be having a big lifestyle change. And I just made sure that I, dude, I really can't appreciate the amount of support that I had from everybody throughout this. And it was, it was insane the amount of support I had. And I, I just am grateful for it. But when they came in, man, and told me that it was severe to life threatening, it was, it was bad, man. I was actually genuinely concerned. And for the first time in my life, I was like, oh shit, you know. I could die. I was like, this could be something that could potentially end my life. And being as young as I am, being only 22, you know, I feel like that's, I didn't want my life to end yet. So, I, I mean, I took this insanely seriously and I was like, okay, well, you know what? Lifestyle change is happening. I was like, you know what? I, I'm staying away from my triggers. I'm taking this medicine. And I've never been one that's been big on like being diligent about my health. And that's just something that's on me. But when they said that, man, it, it really, it hit me hard. It hit me fast. And, um... It, it was wild. And so, you know, I ended up going home. I felt like crap. I'd been in the hospital for like three, four days. I just, I felt like crap. I wanted to go home. I went to sleep, you know, and, um, when I woke up that next morning, man, when I woke up that next morning, man, for the first time in six years, I was able to breathe. I was able to breathe. I was able to smell. I haven't been able to smell anything in years, man. It, it was just, it was wild as a wild experience. There's, there's stuff that I'm around every single day that I just, I can't smell. I can't even remember the smell of it. And like, like it was honestly, it was honestly one of the most emotional times of my life. And I know that's stupid to say, but just smelling things like I, I, I forgot what Mountain Dew smelled like, dude. I forgot what chicken, like a chicken biscuit from McDonald's smelled like. I forgot what my, you know, green grass smelled like. And for the first time since I had been with my fiance, I was finally able to tell her, dude, 
how nice she smelled because I could finally smell her. So it's obviously, it's been a few days since since I came home from the hospital and I've been banging out content. Obviously I'm doing okay. And I'm, I'm doing great actually, I'm feeling amazing. I have so much more energy. I'm more uh, energetic, I have more drive, more anything. And this was a big eye opener for me, man. Like you don't always have the time that you think you do. I'm only 22 and the fact that I had to go to the hospital and them tell me that it was life threatening. For me to get my shit together and you know, just really take everything as serious as I should, which is why I wanted to come back and be like, you know what? I'm not taking content for granted. I'm not taking this community for granted. I'm not taking the opportunity I've been given for granted. I'm going to be banging out what I know I can. And before I get too emotional, I'm going to go ahead and end this video off. Just know guys, I am on the fucking grind and we're going to be on it from here on out and we're going to be making it happen. But without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this explained a little bit. I know I was kind of all over the place here and there. I freaking love y'all. Thank you all so much for the support over the past week. And I genuinely cannot appreciate you all enough, especially Deku because I fucking love that motherfucker. But seriously, I freaking love y'all and I'm out guys. Peace.